Yeah. You know what this one is, Eddie? What? 286. Woo! 286. 286. 286. And you think it's just uh, the two of us. Yeah. Who else? It is still is. Oh, it still we is. We thought we were um, going to have them back. I know. It, it's probably not going to be until next week. Uh, b- oh. And I don't know how he's doing, buddy. This is uh, not good for him. They, oh, they're very bad. It was a bad, a bad week. A bad week for Cody. <laughs> it was. Oh, the big T's probably bl- blaming Cody for everything. He right? has to be. I mean, because the Republican establishment is blaming him. Yeah. So he's got to throw somebody under the bus. I'm sure. I heard. I don't know Cody. if it's a rumor, but I heard he was the one who slipped him the card. Hey, blame Melania. Blame Melania. <laughs> and then that's what he did. And that didn't play too well in the crowd. So now he's turned against now, Cody. Completely. It's got to be against Cody. It's mm. It's going to be. Man, how are you? And is it true? Where did that red wave, where did you end up after that red wave just came and, 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 and took me away, took you away? Like everyone, like, it's going to be like the fucking elevator in the fucking Titanic, bro. Listen, bro. In the fucking elevator in the Shining, bro. Listen, bro. It's It's like the fucking elevator in the fucking Shining. It's going to be that elevator that, uh. This is, is, it's going to be like. (laughs) I'm doing my best Ben Shapiro. It's it's like a weird Doug Jamesy kind of, you know. It's going to be this wave. It's going to be similar to a disaster movie, that disaster movie. It's going to be that. It's going to be a tsunami. (laughs) Well, it sure was, wasn't it? Yeah. Man. People don't buy your bullshit. They don't buy it. They don't fucking. I'm. You know what I'm stunned, Eddie? I'm stunned that the they're putting litter boxes in our high school bathrooms. I'm stunned that, 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 that they... didn't work as a policy to vote I, on. I, I'm stunned that didn't give them so, the, the push so, they thought it would. So an actual policy of just trying to own the libs isn't R- something you can run on. Right. They're putting litter boxes in our high school bathroom, which never happened. There's never been one instance of that. No, happening but they said it, they said it on that podcast, so it had to that be true. Had to be true. They're putting litter boxes in our high school bathrooms. We can't have this. I'm stunned that didn't carry him to victory. I'm stunned. Uh, get, I, it makes great for retweets and anger oh, posts. Oh yeah, but yeah, uh, it's, not so much when you actually want stuff done. It's not when you actually want to <laughs> move the needle on anything substantial. Fucking idiots. Maybe maybe don't run. On critical race theory, maybe don't run on that. On Unless you live in get... Florida, then I guess all that works. Well, but it also helps when your governor <laughs> just completely rigs it so nobody of color can go vote. You know, like that probably didn't help either with his redrawing and all that <sighs> stuff. But yeah, like it, it's crazy, crazy that didn't work out. Crazy Nuts. that didn't lead to this rev- red way. That critical race theory, Eddie, that's not being taught in any public school anywhere. Ever. It's stunning. That they would the, the getting that out of schools that aren't even teaching it didn't carry them through. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> fucking crazy. <sighs> I'm stunned. Me too. Shocked. I'm stunned. Cody's got a lot of soul searching to do. Cody's got a <laughs> he's got a lot of soul searching. <laughs> a whole lot. Who I he mean, is and where he wants to go. There's with his only life. so many times you could be a fucking crybaby and say it was rigged. Yeah. There's only so many times you could be a fucking crybaby and say that this election was stolen. There's only so many times. Mm. Only so many times. Mm. 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 But Except the costume contest was rigged. And that was rigged. That, that, was, that was fucking rigged. rigged. That was fucking rigged and stolen. That was rigged. Yeah. That costume contest was, that was rigged. rigged and stolen. We, that was stolen. <laughs> there was a big ballot dump after we, are, we left. Oh. After uh, hours. Uh, are we... Or I, I'm just maybe we're still so sore about this that Real maybe sore. Real sore. maybe we I'm not promising anything, but you might see Skeletor, Dex, and Hordak outside of four four seasons landscaping again. I I don't know. <laughs> there could be that could be a possible thing. We don't know. That's how much it's angered our base. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our base yeah. is angered. Yes, it's. Oh man, it's uh, but, mm. but you know what? We have we have even bigger fish to fry. Do we? I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some like Prince sang controversy, okay. some controversy. Da, 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 okay, da, da. Right, let's hear it. 
Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Now, <laughs> the MCU mm-hmm. is something that you and I have been pretty, pretty big fans of. We're, we've admired their work. Since day one. Since, since Iron Man. Since day one. Since Iron haven't, Man. Haven't and now, really left anything hating it. Not everything's never. been great, never. but not never hated never. anything. No. Never. And it's always been MCU is here for me. Yeah. Fandom. Star Wars is here. Okay. Because okay. of how bad the prequels have been, were. Yeah. How bad... I thought how much of a just rushed mess Rise of Skywalker was. Um, how well much... that was because they were trying to do a retcon from Last Jedi because right. all the execs panicked because the incels were upset. And that was such a great movie, yeah. Last Jedi. And then how bad I thought the Obi One show was, and I thought how underwhelming Book of Boba Fett was. Right? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I get yep. that. I mean, those are your opinions. You have those. Yes, those that's, are yours. Where, that's where that's that's not that, that's not how I rate everything, but that, that's how that's you where rate. I'm yes. ranking it. Okay. Right? Yes. Remember, this is Star Wars. Okay. This is MCU. Okay. Now, this yeah. was before Episode Nine and Ten of Andor. Uh huh. After Episode Nine and Ten of Andor, I it's right Woo! there. It's right. It is wow. The push Andor has given the Star Wars universe for me. <laughs> My God, it's I'm right back to Andrea. Even said we we're watching it last night, Episode Ten. Yeah, and she said, "Is Cassian Andor the coolest Star Wars character ever? Is he? I mean, I'm." I'm, look, this this might get sacrilege. This might get hate mail, but I, he might be a bigger badass than Han Solo because we're because since he passed away, yeah, we're never gonna see Return of the Jedi level, and where they just make him Larry from the Three Stooges for an entire movie, <laughs> like they did to Han Solo in Return. Boba Fett, Boba Fett, where whoop well, whoop 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 whoop. That was in Harrison Ford's defense, he wanted Han Solo to die. Before it got to that point, right, he wanted right. he wanted the Andor ending before it got to that point. Yes, and they but they ruined him. Yeah, he is he is Harrison, and I think that's why Andor is going to walk away from this, the baddest motherfucker in the Star Wars universe because he's not going to have a Return of the Jedi film to absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> ruin his his legacy just i mean because if you want to look at he's at not gonna my, have a moment where he looks at leia and goes well if 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 you, if you guys are happy then that that's okay oh no <laughs> he's he's my brother <laughs> oh <laughs> like why does it take so long right uh <laughs> uh uh <laughs> Oh, I mean, that fucking the whole scene at Jabba's. <laughs> so everyone's a Jedi master. Everyone's got to lose him. I'm great. He's he turns into one of the three fucking stooges for the entire Return well, of the Jedi movie. Like when like Harrison Ford said, that character no longer had any purpose. It didn't. That character served no more purpose in the story. Tooth right. Unless so you're going to was... put him in the Falcon to take out the Death Star. Mm-hmm. That's it. And that's what Harrison Ford wanted, and he wanted him to not make it out of the Death yeah, Star. Yeah, sacrifice correct? himself and the Falcon to blow right. up the Death Star, which would have been a great ending. The best ending for his character. Would've I don't know. In, I don't know. In 1983, as like an eight year old, if I would have, it would have shattered that me. I it would have shattered me. It would have aged been... well. It would have aged well. But oh in the moment, my god! In the moment, I've been like, "What the fuck is happening?" So right now, Andor is the baddest motherfucker they have. I mean, holy shit! To and spoilers galore are coming for Andor episode ten. Yeah, I'm now. You ready for this, Eddie? Okay, another hot take. <laughs> this is another hot take. First off, <laughs> for, for for as as it was, as abused as I was emotionally as a Star Wars fan, leading. <laughs> Leading up to all, and I'm talking the prequels. I'm talking ninety percent of Return of the Jedi. 
You know what I mean? It's- well, I mean, we've all known, unlike the MCU, where we're currently in it, and there there was a master plan to begin with, and they've sort of executed this plan over a decade and a half, yep. and we've sort of grown with it, and you can see where everything sort of ties in, and we're watching it made in real time, where Star Wars was three movies, and then, okay, he made three more what that went we before do? that. And then it right. just sort of started being this piecemeal thing where they start putting it together. And most of Star Wars love is nostalgia based. Yes, the this MCU is, the is first not time. MCU is not nostalgia based love. This that's is quality the, love, yeah. and that's why I think Andor has given Star Wars such a push is because there's zero fucking nostalgia here. Yeah, they just basically created Breaking Bad, but in the Star Wars universe. Right. It and so and, here's, but it does yeah. help. There really aren't any legacy characters they're trying to use. And it's genius. That's a huge handicap. You. Try, trying to do a Boba Fett series or anything where you have a legacy character because there's right. so much love for that character. You can't make everyone happy. Right. It's just, so you and, end up making this milk toast level sort of show right. where it's like it's, he's just like he's you don't want to take any. You can't take any real chances <laughs> with it. Right. He's no good to me dead. And right. then now he's like, hey, everybody, I'm everybody's friend. Hey, you guys. Uh, hey, wait, hey, what are you? Who, run, what are you, who runs Bar to Town? Boba Fett what, runs Bar to Town. Boba Fett. What are you radical 19-year-olds with attitude doing on your, on your red, on your, yellow, and blue bikes? You want to join my team? You guys racing for pinks? <laughs> <laughs> so it has none of right. the right, So here's my next, my next yeah. hot take. Okay. Andor, to me, has put the Star Wars universe back where it belongs. In to me, it's right near the top of the mountain of nerdy shit to geek out on. Yeah, it's back where Star Wars rightfully belongs at the top of that fucking. And I'm not saying it rightfully belongs because of content. I'm just saying for my five year old brain, Star Wars belongs there, right? Yeah. And Andor has finally, and then. I'm just going to say it. Episode 10 is the best Star Wars anything ever. Episode 10 of Andor. It's I pretty think great. It's pretty great. If if Star Wars is represented, if we if we ever put Star Wars in the hall the Sci-Fi Hall of Fame, Andor episode 10. What goes like... on the hat? It's Andor episode 10 right now. <laughs> for our for the, it's Andor episode 10. It okay, so I didn't think I didn't think anything could get cooler than the end of episode 9. When yeah. when spoilers, yeah. when Andy Circus's character realizes what Andor has suspected all along, there's yeah. no getting out of this prison. Yeah, and Andor asked him how many guards are on each level, and Circus brushed him off because he's like, enough, enough, enough. You're not doing this. It's pipe dream. You're not breaking pipe out dream. Of here. Yeah, and then my favorite part of it is at the end of that episode when the old man gets when they euthanize the old man and they realize you're not getting out of here. And he goes, how many? And Circus goes, no more than 12. And I just think, oh, shit. Not only is he all in, but he's thought about it. Andy Circus's character has clearly thought about it. Why would he memorize how many guards right. are on each floor? So this has rekindled this rebellion right, in we him. F- we find out in episode 10 why he's never really acted on it. And? Because he can't swim. Amazing. My God. He knows oh. he wants out. And he even he finally is resigned to the fact of like, I'm either gonna die doing this every day or I'm gonna die trying to escape. And I at least yep. die trying to escape. I can at least get some of these guys out of here. It was and that line and that might be the line of Star Wars. I I I put it over the the fort. May the force be with you. I put it above. I love you. I know, Eddie. You ready for a real hot take? Okay, another one. I put it above. Who's scruffy looking? I put it above. All right, you ready for another one? Uh huh. You ready? Don't even do it. Don't do it. I put it over Misa no having Obama. I put it over Misa no having Obama. Misa no having Obama. I put it above Misa no having Obama. I'm your father. I put it above it. Oh, come on. No. I put it above that. And here's the line. No. Here's the line. Greatest line in Star Wars history. I would rather die fighting him than die giving him what they want. Motherfucker. Great line. Great line. That's above them all. That to me, that it, it, I thought you were gonna say I can't swim was the line. 
No, no, that was a great one. That was a great I one. I can't swim. I can't, I can't swim. swim. I can't swim. I can't swim. Better than the two Chewbacca Tarzan. Oh, oh. Better than that was. <laughs> better than, I don't like sand. It's coarse. It's, it's rough and it gets everywhere. Better than that. If you can believe it. Or I, I've died a little bit ever since I've, I've died a little bit every day. <laughs> that I've known you. Somehow it beat that. Is when he go when Andor says I would rather die fighting them than die giving them what they want, and that also I think means Andor's all in on this rebellion too. I I think yeah. he's now like they fucked well, me we out of my. Let me just go live on a beach and not give a shit forever. <laughs> in in space, uh, Turks and space Caicos. Dubai, space <laughs> Ibiza, in outer space, space Ibiza. Caribbean. Yeah, he's like they took that away from me. So fuck them. I'm now. I want to watch this empire. Well, it's crumble. interesting because the first eight episodes of Andor, you just see a guy who is just trying to. He's almost like Han Solo, just trying to make his way through the yep. galaxy, right? Or like Django Fett. I'm just trying to. Way. I'm just I'm trying just, to. Right. I'm. I'm laying low. I'll steal shit. Let me make money. I don't like the Empire, but I'm not going right. to die fighting them. Like Han Solo said, I got no love for the Empire, but I'm not about to take yeah. this shit on. Right. But and, then you see that switch when they when he realizes what the empire truly truly is when they and take what him. they do to people and Mike in that fucking moment and then so okay here's what here's why I think episode ten put it over for me it was that line okay it was the monologue Andy Circus gives when they take control great, great when monologue. he repeats that line right and it is. And it was, I think, maybe the greatest monologue in Star Wars anything is Skarsgård talking to their mole inside. Now, I will completely agree with you. Like, the other stuff, I'm some stuff I'm on board with, other stuff. But, like, the, the Skarsgård <laughs> monologue is the greatest. That's the greatest. Two minutes of dialogue or monologue. In Star Wars history. In Star Wars history. It is. and I mean, we're halfway through it. And Andrea just goes, who the fuck wrote this? Yeah. This is a masterpiece. Because you literally, as he, as the dude is coming down the elevator, and spoilers, there's an Imperial spy that's working for Skarsgård. I, what are they called again? What's the what's The, what's the, the ISB. ISB. The ISB. There is a, there's a rebel within, high, pretty high within yeah. the ISB. And, and he's having, he's got intel for Skarsgård. And what's going to happen, we're going to recap and spoil. So this is just a recap to those who saw it. Spoiler warning. Uh, they captured a rebel pilot who's working for a, a, a sect, right? Yeah. Well, those uh, a rebel sleeper sect. Sleeper cells. One of those a little sleeper cells. Cell one of those rebel rebels. cells. And uh, they're about 50 people strong, this cell. And they captured one of their pilots. They've killed him already, I believe. Yeah. And they've planted his dead body on the ship and they're thinking this is how we're going to capture the rebellion they think the rebellion is this right yeah for the most part yeah and so scars guard heartlessly goes okay let him like just will i'll lose and you think how big of a piece of shit is this guy yeah you hate him you hate yes him. You, you already think he wants Andor dead you already think dead. he sent out a hit on Andor just to right. type any loose ends you're like right. this guy's just using people left and right right and he's as much of a piece of shit as everybody else and then you see why they're not going to win unless you have a guy like that who is going to be able to make those decisions. And in that monologue, you know, you mm. know, he just he's oh my god, uh, what does he say? A, a, a sunrise I'll never live to see. Yeah, like that's what I'm here for. I share uh, something with ghosts. I share uh, yes, like it. I, I'll never. Like, I'm never going to be. I'm. I've rejected love. I've rejected any happiness in my life. I've gotten rid of all of that because this has to happen. This has to happen. And, and uh, you asked me what I've given up everything. Because this this guy's like, look, I have a daughter. I don't want I'm not in anymore. The guy wants out. The, he's the like, mold. dude, I've given up ten times that. And he's like, A daughter? <laughs> really? That's you've given up? Yeah. And it makes you wonder what else this guy's had. And in that moment, you realize this dude has probably had to give up more than we'll ever know. Yeah. In order for this to work. And what's fascinating is in real time, you're watching what Mon Mothma has to give up at the because same time. Because that, that scoundrel banker who, boy, if they need credits, he's your guy. Yeah. And his asking price is Mothma's daughter to marry his stupid kid. Yeah. And it's and like. she is, she oh, has to do it. She's got to do it. It. 
They, it's like it's like Skarsgård said, we took a vow. And he tells that to that mole. We took a vow. And the guy's like, haven't I given you enough? He's like, man, you ain't giving a shit, really. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes right. down to what we need to have happen, you've give, th- this is just the big. Be- and that, mon- that monologue Skarsgård gives, I'm telling you right now, him and Circus should be dueling for Emmy wins. Yeah, I don't and, know how they're both not nominated for Emmys for this. And that writer's going to damn well needs to be nominated and the director needs to be nominated for that episode alone episode 10 it put star wars right there to me it put it right there with breaking bad better call Saul, just fan the sopranos just fantastic it's just, television it's just amazing that we got something like this and i hope we i hope the the suits at lucasfilm see how well i mean i don't know there's not a lot of buzz about it Right. On the on the internet, it's not like, you know, when Obi Wan was coming out, love it or hate it, a lot of people were talking about it. Right. Like, there's just not people talking. People talk I about think, Boba you know Fett. Why? People I talk about Mandalorian. Is, I think this is like Larry Allen, man. It's just doing its job, and you don't really mention it during the broadcast. Right. But it's it's just doing its job. But and what I think that, that has me worried is it won't get the recognition, and we, oh, we're going to get a season. We're getting a season two of this for sure. Yeah, but like, yeah. what other? There's so much more out there I we have, can have f- in this sort of realm. I have a feeling that by the time this show is over, by the time season one has ended, the subscriptions are going to go through the roof because of the buzz. That's what I think. I think it's, I think it's going to be a show that everyone's going to start watching yeah. after this first season. But just ended. imagine if you'd seen if you'd seen it had the book of Boba Fett been handled like this. With, Eddie, it would have been where you actually the- had. Boba Fett trying to take over the largest crime syndicate in the Outer Rim and what he had to go through to do that and how ruthless he had to be to get people to bend to his will. It would have been it's what it Andor is what Book of Boba Fett should have been. Yeah. Mandalorian is great for what it is. Yeah. But Book of Boba Fett should have had the same and it had it for half a minute and it was the Cad Bane stuff. Yeah. And that was it. But it, it get rid of the stupid fucking radical kid biker dudes, the fucking neutrinos from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> get, you don't need those. That you what did they do? Right. It was so fucking stupid. It was or, so or fucking stupid. Even if you handled Obi Wan with the same sort of like gravitas you handle Andor, where you see right. this this old Jedi warrior who is broken in the desert, dealing with PTSD and trying to find out who he is. And, you know, get rid of the kidnapping thing. And you just have these Jedi Inquisitors hunting this dude down. And he's just trying to stay alive. And then he faces Well, and, try, and that would have been so much better. If you, get, if you eliminate the Leia part of it and just make it about Obi-Wan having to be like... Because that would have been more interesting if he never really... He just kept a little bit of a watch on Luke, yeah. but kind of had given up. That would have been far more interesting. He's and just the he's just things, watching Luke, not for the future, not for a new right, hope, but because right. of a promise he made to old friends. And that's it. But I think w- then the Inquisitors w- push him to be like, okay, I'm actually going to try to be in this kid's life a little bit and see yeah. if we can maybe, you know, that would have been so much better than how fucking stupid that show ended up being compared to what it should have been. Same thing with Book of Boba Fett. It could have been had. It could have had so much more teeth to it. But again, I again, like I said at the beginning of this, it's dealing with those legacy characters, right? And people have such love and fondness for them that it, it it paralyzes you from taking great risks with them. But it shouldn't with Boba Fett because what everyone loved about Boba Fett was that he was scary. He was right. a fucking asshole. He was, and then I, I, so they didn't need but, to homogenize but, him. I can understand Obi Wan. But Obama, this guy was a but bounty Dis- hunter. Yeah, but Disney wanted you to wanted four year olds to buy Boba Fett. I know films. they wanted Boba. It was in it. It's fucking. So oh, what you do man. is you you basically castrate Boba Fett. Boy, and you turn did him they into ever! The, and you turn him into this middle guy who's not right. a great a good guy, but he's no longer a bad guy either. He's, he's just no this longer guy. a bad guy. It, so it, you don't know what he's doing. It, it, it would have been Boba Fett needed to have been if you wanted. He should have been the Punisher of the Star Wars universe. Right. Not a good, but, not a I, bad guy, but like 
everyone just doesn't want to take that phone call. And they set him up to be that way at the right. end of season two of Mandalorian when he walks yep. into Jabba's palace and looks at Bib Fortuna and just and blasts just him, without, him without saying a word. And you're like, oh shit! And then just throws him off the throne and sits on. I'm like, I, oh. I thought we, I thought this was gonna be the Godfather, but with Boba Fett. Yeah. Like he takes out, but no. But then he's not. You cut to him inviting everybody over for dinner. <laughs> like, what's happening? Bo, I'm telling you, Book of Boba Fett beyond lost me with the with the fucking radical kids with the fucking radical kids on their speeder bikes. Yeah. I I was like, it turned into a Frosted Flakes commercial. Like what on earth am I watching? Yeah, I man, yeah. I enjoyed how that show opened, and I yes, the I Cat how Bane I, stuff was great. I thought I the, enjoyed the Star Wars porn at the end. Yep, the evil Wookiee was great. Yeah, uh, the badass this, Wookiee. I mean that you know, but again, it was just how many people are just gonna fucking become good guys in this? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they had every single villain except Cad Bane. Yeah, <laughs> basically, just became good. Like it was, it was fucking. So stupid. I was just half expecting the huts to be like, hey, all right, we'll help. You know, like it was well, they kind of did. They're like, they here's a rancor. Did. Bye. Here's a rancor. Like it was just everybody was a good guy. It was so stupid. Yeah. But I again, again, that. they don't want to take these chances with this. And I think. Right. Uh, Tony Gilroy was given sort of that free license. Of like, hey, these are sort of like outside of Mon Mothma, who you see for five minutes in other movies. Right. And Saul Guerrero, who pops up in the right. animated stuff. Right. You've got this. You have free reign to do whatever you want to with these guys because there's no like attachment to them. I just hope they take this and run with it. And in Ahsoka, she literally bites a dude's dick off like midway through a fight, just rips it off, and then fucking kills him. That anyway. But goddamn, Andor episode ten is it's I good shit. It was the it's the best. I'm gonna I will it, 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 in my it's opinion, shit. it's the best Star Wars thing I've ever seen. I also think it's the best written Star Wars thing ever. It. Is the best acted episode of Star of, of anything Star Wars has ever done Wars. between was, Circus and Skarsgård and Andor. Like just God, like the way he's just he won't give up. I love that that he's like, nah, we're gonna get out of. I'm get I'm gonna get out. And I love how he was already plotting something before Circus even came on board. When you yeah. see him just trying to whittle away at that pipe to disarm and then. And, and, like, and what and that, you were talking about was like how was Circus's character, and that's something that I didn't even realize until you mentioned it. But how he was just resigned to die there because, like you said, when they arm the floor, he tells everyone to jump on a table, but he doesn't. Yeah, like you had told me, he doesn't even make a move. He's just like, get on the floor, get on the table, get on he's, the table. He's like, this is it. I'm done. Well, because he knows, he knows where they are. He knows it's right. a, it's a. It's the only way island. off of it is to swim, and he can't. And then Fuck. they're all climbing out of that hole, and then they're yelling "climb, climb," which is the same thing they say at the end of Rogue oh. One when they're climbing up to get the, the, the to get deliver the plans to uh, the the Rebel yep. Alliance for the Death Star. They're climb, climb, and that's all Andor is: is he keeps continuing to climb. And like Jen Erso said in that speech, we keep exalt, we take we take our chance, and we take yep. the next chance until we're out of chances. It and that's is. what they do. I'm I just I I'm, I I I. I it's doubt such this a well dude comes show. back to it, but I wish they could somehow convince Tony Gilroy. Just here, here's your pocket of Star Wars. Have here, fun. you take these characters whatever you want. You but do like whatever I said, you this, want. this has made not only the original trilogy better because we get to yes. see how brutal the Empire, the Empire is. is. Yeah, and it makes that celebration at the end of Return right. of the Jedi mean more. Yes, because you're seeing why. Oh, this is why there, we have a shot of Cloud City and everybody's cheering. Right, or this is why we have a shot on. Uh, fucking uh, Naboo and everybody's cheering because this the Empire was this bad, brutal. It would just, just you would just disappear. Evil. Yep, they just were Nazis. Evil. It was the Third Reich. That's yep. how bad these people yep. were. Oh, fuck. and it makes you think of it. Makes it makes the it even makes the sequel trilogy better because you realize, oh, this is why there was a resistance to any of the First Order coming back like, because they knew how bad again. that was. We can't have this again. Yeah, I mean, I want Tony Gilroy to write some sort of show leading into Force Awakens, so we can see amazing. the First Order coming amazing. back. Right? Oh fuck! It would be. Oh god! I, I'm all. I'd be all. You know. There. But uh, here's the bad news. Oh no! I know. We have contractual fucking okay. obligations. All right. As fun as this has been. All right. Uh, Skeletor. Oh, fuck. Um. We were just praising uh, 
uh, and or for being such a well-written, well-executed uh, show. Um, is there anything you're proud of that you've created where you, you feel you deserve praise for raising the bar uh, uh, of artistic endeavor? Eddie, that's a wonderful question, and I'm glad that you've asked me this. I'm actually ahead of the game on that one. Um, you know, there was a masterpiece of a film that came out in your world. It made its way to Eternia, and uh, highest grossing film in Eternia ever. I don't know if you knew this or not. Um, and uh, it makes me cry every time I see it. But the movie Twister. I don't know if you ever saw that one. Twister. Uh, yeah. The brilliant film. And remember how the whole point was uh, the, the, the main characters were trying to put those, you know, the blonde chick with the nice tits and the other guy were trying to put the, uh, those little thingies in the tornadoes. You can actually see what goes on in a tornado. Remember that? That was the whole point of that movie. They were trying to do that so they could read a tornado. Right. I've done that, Eddie. I did that 35 years before Twister came out. And I, I was, I, as much as I loved the film, I was yelling, you got it wrong! The whole time, because I, you don't really get any kind of data, at least not where I let them lose, because I was trying to see what was in the middle of e -Man's mother's pussy! <laughs> and I, they're still up there, <laughs> you get it? They're still floating. Because I, I, shit, fuck if I know when we're ever going to get any feedback from those drones, they're probably all... You know, where pussy juice has probably melted all of them. Can't get any reading. There we go. Wow. Bet you didn't see that one coming, huh? <laughs> How about that? Woo! <laughs> so, okay. Is that a Ric Flair woo? Is that a Ric Flair woo? He walked away. From Skeletor? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <That's... laughs> oh. I bet Lauren Bobert has a stinky bush. Can I put that out there? And I bet we're all going to see it if she, in fact, loses and uh, goes to, you know, has to show her tits or something for money. Okay. That is <laughs> what, political that? hot take. <laughs> political hot take. You know, one of those kind of vaginas where she does one sit-up and it just it, it smells like a, that fucking place in Seattle where they throw the fish back and forth. Okay, Jesus. All right. Wow, okay. Wow. What right. do we do? Can we cut that. Cut Can we mic. just... I mean, we're no fans of Bobert. I mean, come but on. seriously, come on. Jesus. Some decency. Here. I mean, god damn. <laughs> How lucky is Cody? He he's, he's been away from this for a couple of weeks now. Cinesnob Cody, uh, please go follow. Get LaQuisha to number one. Yeah, where get, it get to 100% on, <laughs> on Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and write the Crocodile Dundee wrongs. Yes. Is that a good way to put it? Two better than three. That's all I can say. Hello? Two better than as three. As bad as two was. Better than three. Better than three. Come on, guys. Gang. Who are we as a society? Where have we fallen? Huh. God. And uh, Eddie, where can they find you? Uh, five days a week, patreon.com, the Ralph Report. Um, Tuesdays, Fridays, Ramble Radio. Wednesdays, Ramble Proper. Oh, hey. I, you can find me on the Ramble Places. You can find Eddie and Cody also yes. on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Retro Rocha. I'm currently playing through Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Ooh. Very good. Under Eddie. It's a, it's a damned masterpiece. Nice. And uh, also, uh, yeah, my YouTube channel uh, you, where I post videos somewhat frequently. Can I show everybody something? Please do. Please, 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 please do. Yeah, it Eddie, came in the mail. Oh, my God. What could it be? What what could it possibly be? It it only cost your your fella here ten smackers. Ten dollars, but all right, it let's has see. to do with us getting robbed. Mm. It's in the we same. We did get game. robbed. We did get robbed. Now you remember the cover of the NES Pro Wrestling game? I'll never forget it. It was just a you know a, a screenshot, if you will. Yeah. Of the game. Was he giving them a backdrop? I believe, right? That's oh, a Japanese one. Ooh, look at that! How much cooler? Was the Japanese cover? Wow, is that Fighter Habuja? I, I believe it is. It has to be. But look at that! Look at that! How much That's gorgeous! Isn't that like ten times better than the so shit we got? So much better. So much better. Well, all we did was get a screenshot of a eight bit video game card. Right. What 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 about this makes him think? Oh, they wouldn't buy that in America. Let's scrap that. What the fuck? <laughs> Who wouldn't have been all over this? Ah. Uh. Anyway.
There we go. But um, beautiful, gorgeous, goddamn beautiful. We love you all. Thank you for tuning in. You know where to find us. F- find us. Stay safe. Have a yeah. great weekend. Do it all. Do it all. We love you guys. We'll be right back here Tuesday. Baby with Cody. Yeah, talking Wakanda forever, maybe? Maybe a poll. Maybe, maybe we have our Butler poll. Maybe we the Butler battle. I don't know. Maybe Let's the see. Butler battle comes to its its end. We'll see. All right, we love you guys. Stay safe out there. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.